Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Geochem. All right gang, we've talked about amino acids at length. We've talked about how they are the building blocks for peptides and when things get even longer, those peptides turn to polypeptides, AKA proteins. So in this video, we're finally talking about how do we make those suckers? How do we make peptides? How do we take amino acids and string them together? All right, and it's gonna be a shorter video. I just wanna show you how we can take alanine and tack on phenylalanine, all right? Because I, there are many different types of strategies for peptide synthesis. The one I will be demonstrating in this video, I believe is a popular one. I believe will be the one you might run into if, you, if your class is incorporating peptide synthesis into the curriculum. If you watch this video and you actually are tasked with learning something different, a different type of peptide synthesis, leave a comment. Let me know, tell me what, you know, roughly what's it called, how, how does it kind of go. I will make a video for it. Just let me know. All right, so, but this peptide synthesis, you know, process is very common. We'll be using what's called the Bach, a Bach protecting group. So, strap in, we're gonna have some fun. So, like I said, we're gonna keep it simple. What I wanna show you, oh, this black marker's dying on me. I wanna show you how we can take alanine and then how we can make alanyl phenylalanine. I just wanna take alanine and tack on phenylalanine. Uh, I, there, are, there are groups that are pretty simple. There's not much going on reactivity wise because sometimes you'd have to even protect things on the R side chain. You'll see what I mean when we get going, but we're keeping it simple just to demonstrate how to use a Bach protecting group. Okay, so what is a Bach group? So the structure looks like this and it's pretty wacky, but I mean, it looks kind of fun. It's kind of, Kind of cool. Okay, so we have a lot going on here. So you can see we have like a mega diester in a way, right? Because, you know, we have this going on, we have this going on, but there's even an oxygen wedged in the middle. It looks super scary, but don't worry. Uh, in no world do I think you have to really show mechanistically how this thing gets on as a protecting group, but we'll see how it gets used. Okay, so. What I want to show you, right, I want to show you how alanine, how we can tack on phenylalanine, go from just an amino acid and then get a dipeptide, okay? So what we can do is if we start off with alanine, and I'm going to start off with something very basic. I am going to draw it neutral in this way, I'm not going to draw stereochemistry. So what we can do is if you toss in your Bach group, and I highly recommend that you abbreviate, and you don't have to include this solvent. I've seen it all over the place though, and in my own classroom experience. Triethylamine, this is a solvent. It's not really, you know, imperative, I guess I would say, but the Bach group absolutely is. So in this protection, what we're trying to do is, we're just trying to kind of expose the carboxylic acid, right? Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take phenylalanine and we're gonna kind of stick it on here and we're gonna remove, remember we do a condensation reaction, so we're gonna remove this. The Bach group is basically supposed to keep this, the amino part of this amino acid occupied. We're basically just gonna protect it, say, you're not supposed to be involved, you know, we're putting baby in the corner, okay? So when we do this Bach protection, uh, I think you'll be able to see this, maybe not in a mechanistic sense, but like in an atom accounting sense. We, we, I guess we can say plus, plus. We're gonna produce these. So when we do a Bach protection, we end up with this. Carboxylic acid is left unharmed. We got this going on. And we're basically making a peptide bond here. We're basically gonna end up with this. So I think you can see how we grab this and we're borrowing it here. But I think you can see how, basically how the protection mechanism will go. We will make CO2. There's gonna be a decarboxylation, and then there's gonna be tea beaten all left over. So everything, accounting-wise, checks out. So what you'll see is that we have a Bach, you know, we've now protected our alanine with a Bach group, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase this. What I'll even do is I'll move it up here. Do plus CO2, plus this. Okay, so now that we have our Bach protecting group over here, uh, yep. Things are starting to get large, ladies and germs. Okay, so we have this. Now what we can do is we can involve our phenylalanine, right? 
So that can be our NH2, our COOH, I'm gonna draw our group up like this, that's phenylalanine, right? So this is just gonna be amine form or sorry, amide formation, right? We're gonna it's gonna go through an addition elimination mechanism. I will link the amide formation video in the description on this video, but you can see that we are going, what I'll say is I'll draw this here and this here. We are going to lose this. We are going to lose this. We will produce water in this condensation. And then we kind of end up, we just smush them together. So I will again draw my Bach group because it's not off yet. You'll see getting rid of that Bach group is going to be very easy. So we got nitrogen and H. We got this. So this now is no longer carboxylic acid. We have a peptide bond now. This is brand new. This bond right here. Okay, that's the peptide bond. And now we just kind of have phenylalanine and then our carboxylic acid. So if we even wanted to make this even simpler, what I'll do is I'll make that a step one. And if we need to deprotect, all we need to do is have a second step where we just have HCl, we just need acid, and just like any additional elimination mechanism, we'll protonate this, it'll, you know, it'll crumble, and we get our amine back right here, okay? So I know I didn't include charges, but I just wanted to highlight, you know, you know how the amino acid would look at neutral pH or whatever. But I just wanted to highlight, all you need is the Bach group, and that'll protect your amino, uh, you know, the end terminus of your amino acid, right? Because this just doesn't have to be, you know, an amino acid to start. This could be a tripeptide. This could be, you know, six amino acid peptide, right? You just protect the end terminus so that your C terminus can be added to whatever kind of new amino acid or peptide you're adding in. They will smush together, and then you can throw in some HCl to deprotect your Bach group. Okay, gang, I hope that if anything, you found this video, you know, not scary, but fun. You think the Bach group is kind of cool, kind of cute in a way, and uh, you had a good time. So thank you for watching and hopefully liking and subscribing. And no matter what, I'll see you all in the next video.